Beauty photography does not necessarily have to surprise people with strange ideas. Ideally, my model shows herself to me unguarded, real and beautiful. I want to capture such intimate moments. I'm looking for a true connection with my model. I want this moment to feel real in my photography. I want every detail of my image to be true to life. The Nikon Z7 II is first and foremost a very intuitive camera. It is a tool that delivers excellent image quality and just feels right in your hands. Instead of adding another layer between me and my model, it is an extension of my creativity and lets me focus on my work. Our set with the light tubes is easily my favorite from our shoot. It is a very challenging scene for a camera, with such a high dynamic range and bright colors, but we have managed to capture it so well. The Nikkor Z lens lineup is so powerful now, and we can show resolution, lines, textures and details with clarity like never before. And with the 50mm 1.2, we can add even more depth to our images. You can show so much more of your set, your background and the model surrounding. You get this super nice creamy bokeh that you are only used to see on larger telephoto lenses. The Nikon Z7 II has everything Marie needs for professional reliability. There are dual memory card slot and with the new battery grip she can easily shoot all day. When you're working on a set where everything is moving and everything is moving fast, you have to be sure that your camera not only captures the resolution and the sharpness, but also to capture that perfect moment. And with the new Nikon Z7 II, Marie can have that confidence to rely on her camera to capture exactly that moment. Every little detail has to add to the entire image, so it all comes together. And with the Nikon Z7 II and set mount system, I feel like I can do that more freely than ever before, without restrictions. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Nikon Ambassador Christian Bogner, and I'm really excited to be talking about the new Nikon Z7 II. I had the pre-production model out here in the Rocky Mountains with me for just under two weeks. It was a very quick two weeks. This was from having the camera given to me to concept, ideas, execution, all during COVID where there were restrictions, masks need to be worn. Uh, difficult to get models and so many uh, challenges, but I did really well uh, and uh, happy with the images I was able to produce. And I'm really stoked to be able to share them with you for the first time today. So let's get into it. Um, as you can see, I shoot everything from landscapes to architecture, to fashion, to sports. Um, I've been uh, photographing since I was a little kid, started my um, photography studio when I was 16 years old, and I'm a third generation master photographer. Proud to say that my grandfather started Bogner Photography over 80 years ago. Um, so the Z7 II, I call it a master's tool uh, for creating any vision. And the reason why I call it that, um, because whether you're a pro photographer or you're just a passionate photographer or you're a hobbyist or enthusiast, it doesn't matter. It is a tool that no matter what level you're at, you will be able to get masterful quality images with it. Um, and, you know, I think for me personally, if, if I was to go to any commercial shoot, and I could only choose to bring one camera, this would be it. This is the most versatile camera that I've ever used from whether I need to shoot, uh, you know, film on a gimbal to whether I need to be able to do fashion or landscapes or uh, high-end commercial work. You've got the resolution, you've got the speed, 
you have the um, complete um, immersive feeling of the camera. It's lightweight, it's compact, and of course, uh, the Z-mount. The Z-mount has been a game changer uh, for me, and I know a lot of other pro, pro photographers um, that are my friends and fellow ambassadors, because the quality of the optics, the quality of the lenses are so good. You can shoot wide open, you can shoot closed down. Um, and for me, it, it, and all in a lighter weight uh, package, it really, really is amazing on top of having five stops of VR. So you can shoot without a tripod in situations, um, I can shoot, you know, into a 15th of a second or a 30th of a second, no problem, where I couldn't dream of doing that at such high megapixels in the past. So the new gear is really a game changer. Uh, and um, I know for me personally, I am producing in the last, since mirrorless, I'm producing the best images of my lifetime. And uh, it's, it's, it's obviously part of my own experience and evolution, but it has a lot to do with the capabilities of the camera, but also how I feel and connect to the camera and how it allows me to connect to my subjects. So let's get more into that. Let's get into the Z7 II. So I talked about this immersive photography and video experience. This is really important. You know, growing up uh, in a photography studio, I had access to all sorts of different cameras. And I know that if I had my dad's Pentax 6.7, or I had a Hasselblad, or I had a Nikon, if I was switching to different formats, different cameras, different sounds, it gave me a totally different feeling. And I can tell you for me personally, this camera feels really great to me. And I encourage anybody that is buying a camera to go and test it out just to see how it feels. Make sure that it feels right for you. Um, but yes, I love this camera. Uh, it feels great. I can't wait to try it out with the, uh, the motor grip. Uh, and, uh, but, um, I think that one of the things that sets mirrorless apart, and I was involved with the uh, Z7 original launch, um, and that was exciting. And I didn't think I was gonna love mirrorless. And then I, I was pleasantly surprised because I, I ended up loving it. But one of the things that's, that's so amazing about mirrorless is when you pick the camera up, you put it up to your eye, now I have access to heads up display. I can adjust my, virtual horizon, I can change to my histogram, I can um, see in real time my white balance adjustments, my autofocus adjustments, my picture control changes. I can see all that in real time. And as a result of that, I feel like it's just so much easier to connect to what you're, what you're getting and what you're shooting. Um, and as you connect to what you're shooting, you connect to yourself. Uh, so I think that's all very, very powerful and that's what I'm talking about when I talk about an immersive experience. Um, and when I would talk about having it being um, a master's tool because it, it helps you master your own capabilities because um, it's, just, it's just so intuitive um, and, and it allows you to immerse yourself. And I think that's really important when you're creating, you don't want to be distractions. You, you don't want it to be waiting for the camera. You want it to be nimble. You want it to be um, powerful. And this specific camera, the Z7 II, they've added an additional processor. So it's got two processors and I really, really noticed the difference. I noticed it everywhere. I noticed the electronic viewfinder. I feel like it's smoother. It, it allows me to, to see that moment better. I notice it shooting, I notice it in autofocus, I notice it all the way around. And I think that is, uh, that is a great advancement um, because everything runs smoother. It's like having, it's like the difference when you, if you buy a, bought a new computer and it's, it's a powerful computer and you've been working on a slower computer, you notice the difference, you notice the speed in everything. And that's kind of how I feel about this particular camera. So my assignment was commercial uh, photography. And of course, where did I start uh, with the camera? Black and white uh, fine art photography. Uh, you know, and that, that is typical of me because I love switching gears. 
uh, I went out to source some locations and I ended up uh, just just deciding that I was going to, um, you know, stop and photograph some of these amazing clouds that were out there because we, we, when I got the camera, we had some not great weather. It was sort of the switching from autumn to, um, to winter, um, but we did have great clouds. And so I switched my camera to a black and white in camera. And one of the things that I love about the Z series cameras is all the new picture control settings. And I've always been a big fan of picture controls. I like getting it right in camera. For me, it's like choosing your film type. And, um, but picture controls give you control over saturation, sharpness, clarity, but then there's all these other picture control um, options that give you totally different looks. Um, you can also pick black and white ones. And, and so I have a programmed black and white picture control setting that gives me kind of <clears throat> this Ansel Adams kind of look, this high contrast black and white. And I've done some experimentation and played around with a few things um, and a few color filters. And, and this is what I came up with. But the the Z7 II allows me to get images like this without any post-processing whatsoever. I can do it all in camera. In fact, when I was shooting with this pre-production camera, I didn't know if I'd actually be able to access my RAW files after the fact, because sometimes uh, it just doesn't work with the RAW files. So I shot RAW plus JPEG. Now, thankfully, I was able to access uh, some of my, my RAW capabilities, uh, not all but most, uh, but but still, I was shooting it to get it right in camera. And again, these were just a couple images I got while driving to source my other locations, but just the light was fantastic. The clouds were fantastic. Um, these clouds especially were epic. They're just huge, and I love that high contrast, um, kind of uh, deep blacks, you know, looking at texture, looking at shape. I shot some vertical video as well, which was kind of fun. And I shot it in black and white because I figured, why not? You know, why not? That was my intention. And so why not uh, focus on my intention directly in camera versus shooting it in color and trying to uh, convert it later on in post or whatever. There's something very gratifying about being able to capture uh, right in camera, in the moment, uh, and modify it in the moment if you want to. So um, yeah, I had some fun with it and I got some really cool images and uh, that little bit of a time lapse uh, in the center there. <clears throat> so commercial photography, this was my real assignment. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I love to do when I get any camera is I like to put it through a bit of an extreme uh, field test. So I love to, to switch gears, switch subjects, put it through some different, different paces. Um, but one of the really powerful ways of doing that is um, commercial photography, you know, where you're using strobes, you're using sometimes difficult locations, you're dealing with models, all those kind of things. Um, you don't have the opportunity to go again. You know, you got to nail it. You know, when your client's paying you, you've got to nail it right uh, in the moment. And so um, here were a couple shots that I was able to get. So this was an interior that I got. Um, one of the things that is... Um, Striking about the Z7 II to me is just, uh, you know, taking off on the, the Z7, the original Z7. It's just the incredible dynamic range. You know, I, I never used to be able to shoot interiors like this with one image. I'd have to shoot maybe potentially multiple images, or I'd have to do a really sophisticated lighting setup to get nice balanced light. But here I've been able to just use SB, two SB5000s, bouncing off the ceiling a little bit, not a whole lot of power. Um, and with one raw shot, I'm able to pull on the shadow detail and pull on the highlight detail and produce an image that has um, a lot of uh, dynamic range. Uh, and the, you know those light areas and those dark areas, I've got detail in both. And that is just phenomenal about this camera system. Uh, and I utilize that in all sorts of different things. Sometimes I do in-camera HDR, but um, these days I don't even really need to very much because the camera 
um, just allows me to pull so much uh, in the raw information. You can also use um, D-lighting and set that to a higher level. It does a really good job uh, with this D-lighting as well because of the dynamic range. <clears throat> so as I mentioned before with COVID, it was really difficult uh, sourcing things. I really wanted to try to photograph a private jet, but I, I realized that would be super difficult to uh, to arrange um, in under the circumstances. And so um, I asked around my one good buddy uh, lent me his Ducati for about a week. So I'm very grateful. Thank you. Um, it was fab to photograph. Uh, I love shooting with the lights on. It, um, yeah, it's, it's you know, it, it didn't, doesn't look specifically Ducati, so I love that about it. Um, it just looked a bit more generic, um, but I love the colors, I love the shape of it. Um, and I used multiple studio lights to create this image with a little bit of a fog machine for some atmosphere. This image, um, I shot handheld, but I dragged the shutter a little longer. I used some uh, RGB LED lights to create some more atmosphere. Dragged the shutter for the fog a little bit to create some more kind of movement in the fog, but my studio strobes to lock down the exposure, gave me nice clean lines on the bike. The image on the left, I took a glass uh, and some fake ice in there and just basically threw it up in the air into a kiddie pool with some foam uh, and only broke a handful of glasses uh, in the process. But um, that was a lot of fun. I wish I had more time with that one. I just used food coloring to create the color in the glass. Um, and yeah, that was a lot of fun to capture it. You know, one thing to note, when you're shooting images like this, the camera may shoot up to, uh, the shutter may, may work up to an 8,000th of a second, but when you're using flash in a darker room like I was, the flash has an, can have an even shorter duration. So, um, so that's how I was freezing the action, freezing the water. I was using the flash burst duration to, to freeze the action there. Um, and then the image on the right, uh, was an image that I was able to uh, create um, just to kind of mimic a um, an industrial location shot. Um, and this particular image uh, I was able to get um, with these leading lines. I was just on a hike and I, I saw these, uh, I guess they're front loaders uh, maybe, uh, and uh, you know, there, it was up on the mountain like that. And there's this, these leading lines that drew you up into that shot. I thought, oh, this is so cool. And they're yellow. So I basically waited till both arms were out, which took quite a long time, uh, but I was able to nab the shot. And, uh, and I like it because of its, of its illustrative capabilities. Also the, the tones, the contrasting tones of the blue and the yellow. Uh, I really like that with the shot. And this one was a little more sophisticated. This was, was two, uh, two glasses flying through the air. Um, this was harder to do and uh, two different food colorings, but again, really cool shot, uh, a lot of fun. Um, had the uh, light, a uh, backlight uh, blowing off of a, uh, the white background uh, to kind of, kind of help illuminate the glassware from the back. So then I wanted to get a little bit creative and I wanted to create something that really showcased the Nikon's ability to capture amazing color in camera. And I've always loved big, bold colors. And I thought also it'd be really fun to contrast some of those fine art black and whites that I did with some big, powerful colors. So I went to an art shop, got some new pencil crayons that were sharpened, uh, picked up this, uh, this little sharpener here and tried to create sort of this image that looked like a zipper uh, and just kind of a little bit of a play uh, there. And um, I really love the camera's ability to capture big color like this right in camera. And uh, this image was a fun shot. I basically, uh, basically taped these pencil crayons together against a board, hung it. And you can see on the right, I've shot video with the camera at 4K 60. So I've slowed it down to half speed so you can see a little closer to what I was getting on the left where I was really freezing that action. But, um, but that, that whole effect was created um, in camera, not in post.
So, and you can see uh, on the right, as I'm varying my hairdryer speed, I tried multiple different uh, devices to uh, like a, a compressed air, all sorts of things, but um, my hairdryer was the, was the best I found to create the, the desired effect. So if you wanna try that at home, uh, I would start with a hairdryer, not a compressor. It's way too powerful as I found out. Um, yeah. Now, one of the things that um, I like to do, especially when I have an assignment or like a two week assignment like this, where I'm just shooting commercial is just switch gears, right? Switching gears can um, not only allow you to, to connect with a different subject, uh, especially something like nature where it's very peaceful. It can really help you connect um, to, uh, to your surroundings. And as you connect to your surroundings, you connect again to yourself. And, uh, but it also, it's just very recharging. And so I got out of nature and, and how could I not with beautiful fall colors like this? Um, I definitely, again, wanted to see what the camera can do for landscapes. Cause it's one of the, the areas that I really use this camera, uh, and it really performs so well with that dynamic range. So this image, uh, sort of some beautiful golden light, um, Another image where we got a little bit of atmospheric fog and some golden uh, colors on, on the top. Later in the day, most of these shots. Uh, this particular image here was um, showcasing actually the brand new 14 to 24 f2.8, which I absolutely love, love, love. It's amazing. Uh, it's so sharp edge to edge. It reminds me of the old 17 to 35, which I used to love. Um, it is so much smaller and lighter than its F-mount counterpart, the 14 to 24 F-mount. Um, yeah, I can't say enough about it. It is just really a fantastic lens. I think this will end up being one of my favorite and most used lenses for a lot of my commercial work and landscapes. So definitely loving that lens. Um, I shot a, most of these with that lens uh, as well. Uh, here I've got some spin drifts coming off the mountain and you can see that dynamic range again where I'm shooting almost right into the sunlight and I've still got detail in the whites, which is um, really fantastic. The weather changed from fall to winter while I had the camera in my two weeks, uh, not to mention super high winds. Uh, you can see uh, the image on the right, uh, sort of playfully shooting up at the trees, uh, center, that was a sunset image and uh, using probably um, cloudy white balance just to further warm up the image a little bit. Um, and the image on the left was uh, just a very illustrative image. You know, you, you know, it's one of those where you're driving down the road and you see this nice S curve and uh, I had to drive way up above and got a little exercise running to the spot. And I got lucky where the cyclist was just driving on that S and I was able to kind of create a point of interest in that shot, which I love. Um, this was one of my favorite fall type images. This is Vermilion Lakes in, in Banff. And uh, it's one of my favorite little spots. You know, you can usually find somewhere along there that is just stunning. It seemed to, uh, the fall colors uh, in a lot of places that was with the high winds that the leaves were, were flying around, but here, uh, everything looks very majestic still and pretty untouched. So I was able to get some really good shots. And interestingly enough, as I was taking that shot, this dragonfly caught my eye. And I feel like dragonflies and hummingbirds are my nemesis sometimes. And so I was able to, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna really test out this autofocus. I'm going to try to capture this dragonfly in flight. And I did. And this really impressed me because um, it really showed me that, I mean, not only does the, the Z7 II have some new focus modes that are very effective, but it just seems to, to autofocus that much better. And so I'm very impressed with the new autofocus capabilities of the camera, which was always one area I wanted to see improved. And I'm really glad Nikon did it. So part of uh, landscape photography is getting up early. Uh, for the two week period, I think I, I looked out my window every morning to see if it was clear. And if it was clear, I got up, uh, got outside, and here was one of the payoffs of some Alpen glow with some blue sky. Driving around, a lot of these images I got just kind of driving back and forth to potential locations for my commercial shots. 
and you know just just taking an opportunity to take a shot uh you know in these in these beautiful moments um most of these images again are shot handheld i love that i can do that i love that i can shoot um at slower shutter speeds because the camera has that five stops of um vibration reduction in camera and in camera stabilization uh so that i mean again that is another one of those game changers that the um, vr on the sensor it is very powerful um and all my images are just sharper as a result of it especially because it's you know the camera's producing a very high resolution and so you want to make sure there's absolutely no camera shake and the camera helps you do that and it does it very very well again love the color that i can produce with the camera um and you know love these kind of moody images where i'm able to pull so much data um, and just the nuances in, in some of the colors. I find with the, with the Z-series cameras, my style after 30 years has changed um, because, because of this extra dynamic range, I'm able to shoot, and I like the look of, shooting images a little more cinematically, a little bit um, more detail in the blacks and, and, and a little bit less punchy. Um, uh, you know, and I, I've been doing that and it's, and so it's funny how this, this camera has actually helped me evolve as a photographer, as a storyteller, and it's given me a, a different look, uh, which, which, which I'm very grateful for. Um, this particular image here is, uh, you get every once in a while, you see some rare iridescent clouds and, uh, the Z series camera just picks up so much amazing, color sometimes sometimes even colors you can barely see with the naked eye uh, i've really noticed this shooting the northern lights out here um you know i'll i'll be looking at the northern lights and uh you know the camera will be picking up purples and pinks and greens and i won't even be seeing it and I was hoping to get out to a place called Yoho National Park to do some time lapses and photograph the, the Takaka Falls, but uh, I waited to the last minute. The weather was supposed to improve and we got a snowstorm, so I never got to do it. Uh, but I did get some local time lapses and some cool video. That was just a quick time lapse I was able to get. One of the things that I absolutely love about this Z7 II is it allows you to shoot time lapses and interval time lapses, but it also allows you to shoot interval time lapses and it will build a time lapse for you at the end. And that's how I did this. I shot <clears throat> um, the time lapse in, and I had it build in 4K, and then I was able to just uh, zoom in and out on the image. So even though sometimes, uh, you know, I don't have, I, I don't have a, you know, the camera um, on, I'm not moving it, but I can give that sense to make it look like I'm moving it uh, by zooming in on the resolution and rendering it 1080p. Now let's talk about detail. This uh, duck was shot with my 500 PF and wow, the detail is just absolutely incredible. Um, and even with video, and one of the new features is that 4K 60. I'm able to shoot 4K 60, slow the frame rate down to 4K 30. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could render in 1080p and zoom in almost four times. Now this was shot completely handheld with my 500 millimeter lens. That's how good that VR on the sensor is, that it just, it just completely stabilizes the image. And even without a tripod, it makes it look like I've been shooting it on a tripod, which is absolutely incredible. Um, I got this guy too. This was shot from the window of my car. And again, it's really nice to be able to slow that frame rate down a little bit, to cut it in half speed. It helps you just kind of connect with the subject a little bit more. And it's just a good tool. You don't want to shoot everything like this necessarily, but if you're shooting on a gimbal sometimes, if you're not trying to record someone talking, you're shooting wildlife, it's nice to be able to slow things down. You can also use your um, slow motion uh, um, profiles to to create some some slow motion video right in the camera. Oh, and there and there it goes. <clears throat> and I had to show one more duck because 
Uh, I love this one too. I can't tell which one has more detail. I couldn't decide, so I wanted to put them both in because it's just something as simple as this, just this beautiful duck that I came across. Um, even as a pro photographer, when I see this kind of detail coming to my camera or I see this kind of detail on my wall, I am so excited. I want to reshoot anything I've ever shot at that quality level. Um, and I, I really, really am so impressed with the quality that I'm able to get from this camera. This was kind of a cool shot, just the perfect timing. Uh, just as, as he was looking off, uh, these birds flew in behind there and I got, uh, got the shot with the birds in the right location. And that, again, having a few extra frames per second, um, like the Z7 II does, that can be the difference sometimes in getting the shot. Because if one of those birds was a little closer to uh, its head, it could have been not as good an image. Now this one, I'm really proud of. It's one of those where I just trusted my gut and I decided, okay, I'm gonna go hop in the car and I'm just gonna go see if I'm gonna find a grizzly bear. <laughs> and uh, I know it's a crazy thing, but uh, I thought, you know, um, chances are they're probably already hibernating. There's, there's probably chances are I'm not gonna see one, but I'm just feeling like I'm in that mode today and I want to give it a give it a shot. So I saw nothing until the very end of the day after the sun had already gone down. It was very dark and I saw this mama bear. And uh, I just kind of waited there by my car and I, I got out of my car, uh, not I just, just like right beside it. Um, and then she started getting a little curious and started coming at me. So I got back <laughs> in my car and uh, and 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 she got more more curious um in, in a good way not in a bad way but uh but she got very close so close that when i was using my autofocus um i couldn't auto i couldn't focus anymore because she was so close with my 500 millimeter but i got this one as she started walking away again i got this one shot of her just kind of looking back at me and what really blew me away is that this is at 10,000 iso um and I didn't think the Z-Series cameras were gonna perform like this, but they do. They really, really perform well at those high ISOs. I'm so impressed with what I'm able to get with the Z-Series cameras at the higher ISOs. Um, and also, I was really impressed with the new low light focusing capability of the Z7 II. Um, you know, when I was looking through the viewfinder, it was really, really dark. It was way brighter, way brighter than what I'm used to seeing. And that was very, very impressive and helped me get the shot. <clears throat> now, as the bears ran away, uh, Mama Bear and her littler one, um, I decided to kind of follow at a distance, big distance. And so I think this is my 500 PF maybe my 500 PF with my 1.4, making a 700 mil, it was really far away. And I was shooting this handheld at a very high ISO and it was getting darker and darker and darker, but I was still able to capture something. I was still able to capture this, this moment, which was pretty spectacular. Having these bears that, you know, they knew I was there, they're letting me photograph them, they're doing their digging in the, in the roots there. Uh, it's pretty cute watching them run in the snow like this but I was able to capture this right in my camera, handheld, you know, not prepared for this at all, but um, yeah, I was able to get it. And that's the main thing, right, is, is to be able to capture the moment, to be able to tell that story um, and, and do it no matter what you have. And that's why I say this is, is such a master's tool because I can always get something great with it. That's how I feel about it. And, and um, um, yeah, I really encourage you to give it a try for that reason and, and see if, it, if, it's, if it's the right camera for you. Um, so switching back to commercial, uh, the, uh, once the adrenaline wore off from uh, the, my uh, close to close encounter with the bear, uh, I got back to photographing uh, some portrait and fashion. I was really impressed with how the autofocus worked, uh, both the uh, eye detect autofocus and the pinpoint autofocus worked really well for my fashion stuff. So I started off with my wife. Uh, we went out and got some shots. There's no fill uh, light here. 
that's the amazing dynamic range again, being able to shoot uh, and have still nice detail in her face, even though the, the light from the side is very harsh. I took her out and when it snowed, we got some images uh, just in the woods behind our house here. And I used the slow motion feature in a vertical format to, uh, to get a little bit of a fun slow-mo video handheld. <clears throat> um, I photographed uh, one of Sarah's really good friends, which we'll see later on. And uh, her boyfriend uh, came to help out and I he told me that he was a, um, a medalist uh, in luge and I was, I was so impressed and he's such a great guy. And so I asked him if, if I could, I, I basically begged him if, if that I could take a few shots of him. So he let me do a few in the studio. I used some really nice contrasty lighting. I was able to use my picture control settings to increase the clarity and give it a bit more of a gritty look to it, which I really like. Um, yeah, so I, I love the ability to customize uh, my look uh, right in camera like this. So this next model was really awesome. Uh, her name's Caitlin. She was such a trooper. She came all the way up from Drumheller. Um, you know, during COVID, it was really hard to kind of find people, right? Willing to come out, coming to a studio uh, and, and working on things. One of my mentoring students, actually, I knew she had shot some cosplay stuff. So I reached out to her and she put me in touch with this, with this person. And um, she, Caitlin also, she designed and created this entire costume all from scratch. Really, really impressive. And she was an amazing model and we got some really cool shots. The one thing that I wasn't expecting when she came were these horns were lit up uh, with a very kind of dim light, but I was using my big studio strobes that I had set up. <clears throat> so what I ended up having to do uh, is, is uh, drag the shutter, uh, expose a little longer, handheld, which I could do to expose for those horns, but then use my studio strobes to lock in the action. Uh, and uh, my strobes allow me to turn a modeling lamp on and off, so I was able to pre-focus, get everything right, and then I'd be like, three, two, one, or one, two, three, and then I'd take a picture and get her to emote an expression. But it actually worked out really well, and I was able to get some phenomenal shots of her in the process, and she held still so well, I was so impressed. Uh, but these are a couple of the shots that I got and um, love how that natural fog machine created such a really cool dynamic to the images. Um, I had a, uh, a martial arts sword that I brought back from Japan on one of my trips, so we used that as a prop in one of the shots. Um, again, I just love what I was able to get with those, those images. <clears throat> so moving on, this was a professional model, Emily, that I hired. Um, she was fantastic. I had photographed her once before, uh, and I tracked her down and got her to come out. And uh, the bike, we still had the bike, so I was able to get a couple shots of her on the bike very, very quickly. Uh, for this particular shot here, uh, again, I was shooting handheld, I dragged the shutter, trying to get a little atmosphere. Um, I had her hold really still. Um, and you know, the, the beauty lighting, you know, used my studio lights to basically illuminate it really nicely. While she was on the bike, I did a little bit of 4K60 video and this is what I got. And again, that 4K60 that is such a huge feature for me because I shoot a lot of uh, work on gimbals. I shoot a lot of work where I just want to be able to slow it down a little bit, smooth things out a bit. And I think it's gonna be really uh, a benefit to me in my workflow to be able to have that as an option. Here I've done a little bit of speed ramping, so I'm able to, to kind of render at 4K30 or 1080 30. Um, so I'm able to then potentially zoom in and out up to four times if I render it at uh, 1080 30 and slow it down half speed or ramp it up in speed. And so it gives me a lot of flexibility. I shot all of this just with the camera on a tripod but um, I would have loved to use the gimbal. Uh, I just didn't have time. But um, yeah, I shot this all on a tripod, but by zooming in and out and, uh, and ramping speed a bit, I was able to create a bit more of a, a different effect. Um, she was a beautiful model. Uh, I had hair and makeup uh, for this as well. So they came out with masks and everything. They were super amazing to work with. Um, and um, I bought a, 
a powerful uh, air purifier first to your room <clears throat> so we could work with a little less worry. Um, but definitely the lo logistics were challenging, but we got through it. Everybody was really awesome. And look at this detail we were able to get um, on this model. Really, really spectacular. Um, uh, you know, I, I really loved uh, loved her eyes. She had great eyes, so really focused on those in the shots. Um, I came up with some really cool um, backgrounds. Uh, I ordered some kind of shower curtain-y stuff that's for the for the left one, and on the right, that's just an emergency blanket. So sometimes I was just trying to, you know, going through my stuff, I found this uh, emergency blanket in a first aid kit, and I was able to use that with a green gel once I saw the clothing that she brought out with her and uh, created a really kind of a cool um, edgy background, which is something that was laying around. And I love doing stuff like that, right? I love improvising and, and making whatever I have work. Uh, you know, that's a lot of fun. So then I switched gears from studio strobe lighting to continuous light sources. And this kind of reminded me of my grandfather. Uh, he was a... Um, a portrait photographer mostly in Germany. Uh, he was good friends with Ernest Lights and, and the Leica ambassador back in the day, but he would use one main light most of the time and then mirrors to reflect that light and get beautiful lighting on his clients. Um, and so I wanted to do something like that. So I set the camera up with picture controls in black and white again. So the image on the left is what I actually shot in raw. But then I wanted to give an example of how you can shoot black and white in raw and then you can go back afterwards in um, Nikon Capture NXI and, and switch the color uh, control mode, the, the picture control mode. And, and so I literally switched it to one of the other custom picture control modes that, that are offered um, and got this color really interesting, kind of almost like a cross-process looking type of image. So just wanted to kind of show how you can, you can do that. You can always shoot black and white in camera and then go back to color later if you want to. And you can also practice with your, your color control points, or sorry, practice with your picture controls by just switching it up um, when you're at home and you can see what they do. So when you're out in the field, you know which ones you can use. Here are a few more with continuous light. You can see it looks a little bit more high contrast. I kind of wanted to go with kind of a Hollywood type look um, and I really like the effect. Hey guys, for my Nikon Z7 II photo assignment, I wanted to do something really unique and special. I've always loved painting with light. So I started experimenting with some new LED lights, trying different things, trying some different colors. Uh, and decided on a more custom solution. So trips to the hardware store, I found some uh, clear pipes and I've got a very powerful flashlight here and some colored gels that I've just wrapped on the inside with some elastic bands on the end where I can put some sparklers if I want to. So I've got myself a pretty cool lightsaber here and by moving it in different ways, uh, and you'll see pretty soon, I can't do it in this room because it's not enough room, but you can make circles, you can make different waves, and you can record that light um, and behind your subject. And as you, you do it, if you move and you wear dark, then it's, uh, you don't really show up in the image, but this has enough power to light your subject. So I had a lot of fun creating these images, and I hope you enjoy them. All right, so I think these uh, coming up are my favorite uh, of the, the group. They were also the had the most at risk. Um, big, huge thanks to this model, uh, my wife's friend and my friend, Annie. Uh, you braved the cold for us. Uh, it was uh, below zero when we did this. It was like, put the jacket on you, get it set up, take the jacket off, quick shot. It was very, very difficult uh, to, to pull these off. Um, I, uh, again, it was my first time doing anything, you know, exactly like this. And so uh, obviously I did not want to fail. We had uh, stars for the first time in the, you know, that I'd, I had the camera. I've been wanting to shoot stars for two weeks and we had stars that night. So, I mean, it really made the shot. Um, and I just love how this turned out. I have a you know sparkler on the outside edge. Um, then there's a little spacer, so there's white light coming through, and then my pink gel. 
I'm standing behind her and I'm just sort of rotating it and trying to make a, a proper circle, which is not easy. Uh, then this image was just waving it around a little bit. Uh, it turned out quite well as well. If you move quickly, you have to move out of the shot um, as you do it. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna you know you're gonna be seen a little bit. So here, I was moving quick enough. You can see a little bit of a tracer of me, but not much. Um, and you know, I think you know to pull these shots off because I think I only got about two tries at it. You know, it was like a one one series where we did it, and then uh, jacket on, and then or no, and then yeah, we at one point. She went back to the car for a little bit and then I kind of evaluated and then we went back out and did a bit, one last set. Uh, I could have done it all night, even though I, I was, uh, I had huge soakers. Um, I had my, my rubber boots were completely full of water uh, because I was running around in the water there. I just kind of dumped them out at the end of the shoot uh, like that. But uh, yeah, no, listen, I'm, I'm really happy these turned out and really excited for the future uh, with those. Um, and as I was mentioning, you know, this was my only star night. I was hoping for another one after this, but it never happened. I uh, never had a clear night. So uh, after uh, the model and her boyfriend who was helping and my wife all went back to the house, uh, I promised everybody some Indian food. So I ordered the food, packed up the gear, and then decided that I still had 15 minutes so um, before the, the food was going to be ready to pick up. So I drove out to a location prayed that I could see the Milky Way. Sure enough, I could. This was a quick setup. It wasn't what I planned. I, I planned a you know extravagant uh, a night shoot one night, but this was it. It was a 15 minute shoot, auto-focused on the stars, zoomed in on the back of the camera, double checked the stars were tight. And uh, yeah, it took about you know five to 10 images. Um, and then when picked up the Indian food and then I, I tried after everybody left, I tried to go back out and it had already clouded over. So sometimes that's all you get. And I love that. I love that. Another reason that I truly believe this is a master's tool is because when you need it to work and you need it to work and exceed your expectations, it does. And it's a, it's a true tool for you. It's like, uh, because, because it, it, it doesn't let you down. You know, and, and I think that's that's the important thing as a as a as a pro commercial photographer, when I'm traveling and I'm getting paid to do a shoot, I need to trust that my equipment will not let me down, that it's gonna work for me. And it does. Um, and I think that uh that the Z7 II uh is definitely uh going to be my favorite camera. Uh, once again, and uh, I'm very excited to get my production model uh, hopefully soon here. Um, so I love that shoot so much that I begged my wife to go back out on the last night that I had the camera and we tried it again. And sure enough, there was no stars that night. It was overcast. <clears throat> you can see the the lights of the town um, reflecting back up to the uh, off the sky. Uh, and uh, but I was able to get a really cool shot of my wife who also braved the even colder weather, I believe <laughs> it was. Uh, so thank you, hun. And um, yeah, I did a bit of a rainbow kind of shot here. Um, and this is uh, my favorite of the shots that I got of her. We had uh, a, um, I think one sparkler, maybe two, and then my lighter broke. <laughs> And so that was it for the sparklers. So it kind of cut our, our possibilities a little short, but uh, you can still get the shot without the sparklers. I just, I really like the look of it uh, with the sparklers. It kind of adds a lot more uh, ambient light. You know, ever since I've done this shoot, I've already come up with like 10 more ideas on how I can improve on this and improve on my technique. So I can't wait to do it again and, and do it better. But uh, yeah, this is what I was able to get. And I'm really, really thrilled we were able to nail it and get some really good shots with it. So I wanted to just kind of end with, um, you know, Nikon asked me to do commercial images. And as you can see, uh, I did some traditional commercial images, but but I went beyond that. You know, I, I was stayed true to, to, to my ideas and, and the ideas that came up in my vision. And the moment where I was driving around looking for a location for a commercial shoot, but I saw something beautiful and I stopped um, and I honored that moment by by photographing and recording it and recording its amazing energy. And so I just I encourage you to do that, right? You know, like listen to that um, that insight, right? Listen to that inspiration that you have from within, uh, and and let it guide you. And 
you know, with, with COVID and everybody dealing with the stuff, I'll tell you that photography has been my salvation just to go out. Um, you know, if I'm feeling stressed or whatever to go out and just find something beautiful to photograph and focus on the beauty around me and to, to capture it with a level of excellence. And, um, it's been, you know, anytime I've been stressed and I've been able to go out and do that, I've felt better. I felt amazing. And I've, I've connected to something beautiful and that's helped me reconnect to myself. Um, and it's just sort of changed my perspective and, and brought my perspective back to where it should be. And so I encourage you to use photography, not just to get great images, <clears throat> but also um, for you just to, to help you connect to everything around you. Um, I wish you all well, stay healthy, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if, uh, if you want to see more stuff, uh, that I'm doing, please check out my Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And thank you again so much. Cheers.